So if you take a look at this picture here of two world record holders, both in their own right, on the left you have Blaine Sumner, on the right you have Eric Lillybridge. Now, what you may notice is that these two guys, their squat form looks nothing alike. Sumner is far more bent over in the hole, and you have Lillybridge who's far more upright. Now, is this a technique issue? Is Blaine messing up because he's leaned over more? Or should Eric be leaning over more? In reality, it doesn't really have anything to do with their technique. It has more to do with their anthropometry, their body length segments. Because you can see Blaine over there, he has a short torso with longer legs relative to his torso. And Eric is the exact opposite with a longer torso relative to his legs. And what this does is it changes their power lifting leverages by uh, changing the position of their joints relative to the bar. So you have a picture of a wrench here, right? That's what moment is. It causes a rotation about an axis. And the actual amount of force th that that uh, moment represents can be measured by the moment arm. The distance between the point that is rotating and the point that is applying that force. So in barbell training or in power lifting, the pivot point is, you know, our knees and our hips. And the point of force application is actually the barbell itself. I think this is one of the best pictures I've ever seen that really explains this concept. The longer the moment arm is, the more difficult it's going to be to handle the weight. Okay, so as you can see here, that big gray dot represents the bar and the red line is the point at which gravity is pulling down on the bar. Gravity operates in a straight line. So that is the point of force application, right? The hand on the wrench. Now these white dots represent the pivot points on the body and that is the hip capsule and the knee. And the distance between these two joints measured at a 90 degree angle is the length of the relevant moment arm. So you can see there's a, a smaller moment arm between the knee and the bar and a larger moment arm between the hip and the bar. Now, if you have a longer leg, you're gonna notice that that moment arm is gonna be on the hip or towards the knee. Both of those are going to get longer and the back angle is gonna be more leaned over. So on the left, we have a guy who has longer arms and on, a, on the right, we have a guy who, so I want you to notice the guy on the left. The distance between his hip the longer those moment arms get, the harder it is to actually do the lift despite the exact same amount of weight being on the bar. So we've already got two major disadvantages for short-armed guy over here, right? As well, if you notice these green lines at the knees and the hips, you can see that the guy on the left has both a more open hip angle and a more open knee angle. Why is that important? The more open a joint angle is, the more advantageous position that it's in. What can you do more on? The quarter squat, the half squat, or the full squat? It's obviously the quarter squat, right? Because the joint is mechanically more efficient the more open that it is. He's also got a steeper back angle. And the more horizontal your back angle is, the more isometric force is required to stabilize the spine. If you guys enjoy this type of analysis of powerlifting and, and barbell training, then I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of Starting Strength. I'm actually a Starting Strength certified coach myself. If you don't understand the biomechanics behind the lifts, you'll never fulfill your potential as a lifter.